We will discuss the theory of unbalanced growth, which was given by Hirschman. So, according to this theory, uh, investment should not be made in all the sectors simultaneously in underdeveloped or less developed countries. Rather, it should be made in leading sectors or in strategic sectors. Now, take a look at the diagram. Through this diagram, we will decide which sequence of investment should be pursued for rapid development or growth. In the diagram, 1, 2 and 3 are isoquant curves which show the various combinations of SOC that is social overhead capital and DPA that is directly productive activities. So, this uh, isoquant curve shows the various combinations of SOC and DPA units which indicate the same level of national output. Now, a line is drawn at 45 degrees called as R. This line is known as the line of equality. This line of equality implies that investments in SOC and DPA are in equal amount or equal proportion. Now, the points A, B and C are called the optimal points. These points indicate the optimum combinations of investment in SOC and DPA. Now, take a look at the diagram. You can see that there are two paths of development. One is A, A1, B, B, B2, C. So, this is one path of development. The other part of development is A, B1, B, C1, C. So there are two parts of development and we have to determine the sequence of expansion which will, um, which will maximize investment and output and which will accelerate development. Now, Hirschman believed uh, that SOC and DPA cannot be expanded simultaneously. Why? Because in underdeveloped countries or in less developed countries, there is always a shortage of resources. Therefore, the problem before the government in these countries is to determine the sequence of expansion that will maximize investment and output. Now, if we expand through SOC, the path of development will be A, A1, B, B2, C. When investment in social overhead capital increases from A to A1, it will induce investment in DPA from A to B1 till the balance is restored at B, which will shift the isoquant curve from 1 to a higher isoquant curve to 2, isoquant 2, implying a higher level of national output. Again, when investment in SOC is further raised from B to B2, that will induce investment in DPA from B to C1. And the balance is again restored at C, which is again at a higher isoquant and the economy will hence have a higher national output level. So this path of development, that is A, A1, B, B2, C, is called development via excess capacity of social overhead capital. Now, if we take a look at the other path of development, that is A, B1, B, C1, C, we will see that when investment in DPA is increased from A to B1, investment in SOC will also increase from A to A1 and the balance will be restored at B which is on a higher isoquant curve too, implying a higher level of national output. This higher level of output will encourage the private entrepreneurs to invest more in DPA, shifting the investment upwards from B to C1, which would make SOC increase from B to B1. Consequently, the balance will be at a higher uh, isoquant 3 increasing the level of national output in the economy. So this path of development is called development via shortage of SOC. 
Now, if we compare the two parts of development, that is via excess and via shortage of SOC, you will see that the first route of development, that is via excess capacity of SOC, that path of development is more smooth and more continuous than the second path of development. The route of development through shortage of SOC is discontinuous and difficult because investment in DPA might not induce corresponding increase in SOC. So the pre preferred path of development will be via excess capacity in SOC. That is the first path of development A, A1, B, B2, C. Now, according to Hirschman, creating imbalances is necessary for economic growth. However, the question arises, how to identify the activities with which to create imbalances in the economy? To identify such activities, we will take a look at linkages. What are linkages? So linkages are of two types. One is forward linkage effect and one is backward linkage effect. So forward linkage effects refer to that investment which encourages investment in the subsequent or later stages of production. For example, investment in iron and steel projects will encourage investment in steel furniture industries or automobile industries etc. as these industries use iron and steel as raw material in the manufacturing of their products. Next is backward linkage effect. Backward linkage effect refers to that investment which encourages investment in earlier stages of production. For example, investment in iron and steel industries may encourage investment in coal industries or lubricant industries. Why? Because these are used as raw materials in the production of steels. Now, to make the policy of unbalanced growth effective, emphasis should be laid on those projects which yield maximum total linkage. That means when we add forward linkage and backward linkage. So such product, uh, projects can be discovered only on the basis of empirical studies which involve input-output analysis or inter-industry analysis. It is difficult to discover such projects in less developed countries or underdeveloped countries because the interdependence of industries is lesser in such countries. Also proje uh, projects with Greatest total linkage may differ from country to country because of socioeconomic conditions. According to Hirschman, total linkage is higher in the middle of production process than at the end or in the beginning of the production process. And also, iron and steel industry have the highest combined linkage score, whereas agriculture and mining industries are weak in combined linkage effects. Now we come to the questions. Question number one is investment projects which encourage investment in subsequent stages of production are known as the correct answer is option C forward linkages. Question number two is which path of development is better or more efficient for underdeveloped or less developed countries. The correct answer is development via excess capacity of social overhead capital. We saw in the diagram that this path of development, that is via excess capacity of SOC, this is more smooth and more continuous and hence more efficient path of development. Next question, consider the following diagram and answer the questions given below. First, which path of development is via excess capacity of SOC? So if you will take a look at the diagram, the more continuous path is A, A1, B, B2, C. So option number C is correct. Next, what is the 45 degree line R called as? The correct answer is line of equality as we discussed earlier. Next, which of the following are the optimal points in the figure given? So, A, B and C. So, option number 
uh, options D is correct. A, B and C. These points are the optimal points in the figure. The last question is, investment should be made in those industries which yield blank total linkage. Fill in the blank with the appropriate answer. The correct option is C, maximum. So, investment should be made in those industries which yield maximum total linkage. Thank you.